All right, hi, welcome back. Uh, I would like to do this example from the, from the book that says a 500 gram block on a spring is pulled a distance of 20 centimeters and released. The subsequent oscillations are measured to have a period of 0 0.8 seconds. First question says, at what position or positions is the block's speed equal to uh, one meter per second? And then what is the spring constant? So uh, first, here is the mass. It's 500 grams or 0 0.5 kilograms. This is the natural position of the spring. You attach a mass to it and you pull it to the right and then you let go. So the mass oscillates back, back and forth. The maximum disturbance from equilibrium is 0 0.2. The period is 0 0.8 seconds. And um, what is the speed at, uh, when the speed is one meter per second, what is X? So you see here, the speed is initially zero. As it approaches the equilibrium point, the speed will be, at some point, will be one, assuming the maximum speed here would be larger than one. It would be. And then, so at some point here, it would be one, and at some point here, it would be one. So what is x at those uh, points? Okay. So first, uh, this is mass on a spring, so it's simple harmonic motion. And so we have x of t would equal to a times the cosine of omega t plus phi. But since we released it from rest, uh, phi would be zero, as uh, I showed earlier. So just to show you that. We released it from rest. So at t equal to zero, x is equal to a. So the left-hand side is a. So the right-hand side is a times the cosine of omega t. But at t equal to zero, this is omega times zero is zero. So you just have the t. So this has to equal to 1. A is equal to A times 1. So this has to be 1. So phi is equal to 0. So we get x as a function of time. As a function of time will equal to A, which is 0 0.2 times the cosine of omega t. Omega is 2 pi over the period uh, times uh, plus phi, but phi is 0. And if you like, you can put 2, two pi over the period. Uh, 2 pi over 0.8, so 2 pi 3.14. That is 7.854. So 0.2 times the cosine of 7.854t, which is just that. And then v as a function of time would be the derivative of this with respect to time. So you would have uh, the cosine will have a negative negative sign derivative and this comes out. So it's really equal to uh, 7.854 times 0.2. So negative that number times 0 0.2, 1.571, 1.571 times the sine of 7.854. That's the velocity as a function of time. So yeah, the maximum velocity, the maximum speed is what's in front here, which is the 1.571. Because this is a function, that, remember, it goes like that. And at the bottom or at the top, the maximum disturbance will be, uh, have a speed here. Uh, the maximum velocity would have, a, would, would be, would have a magnitude of 1.571. So now they say, what's the x at, uh, at, uh, at v. So remember, um, we can use the energy approach. The total energy is. Uh, did I write it? No, I did not. Um, remember, we can calculate at this point here when there, it's at maximum uh, uh, away from equilibrium, the velocity, the speed is zero, the velocity is zero, and therefore the energy is all potential. It's one half k a squared, one half k x squared, but x is equal to a. So total energy is one half k a squared, and that doesn't change. So at some point, when it has the velocity equal to one or the speed is equal to one, x is equal to something also. So I would write it as the, the total energy would be one half k x squared plus one half m v squared, like so. And let's solve for v in terms of a and so on, uh, into, yeah, and x. So we have, uh, we can multiply both sides by two and divide by the mass. So we just have k a 
squared over um, the mass is equal to k over m x squared plus v squared. Move the x to the other side and then factor the k over m. So you'll have v squared would be k over m and then a squared minus x squared. And then take the square root of both sides. Square root of both sides. Uh, and I made a mistake. Actually, they're looking for x, not uh, not v. So, I mean, this is not wrong. This is correct. But I want to solve for x, not for v. So I'm going to just erase this and solve for x. So I move this to the other side and then solve for x. So I have this. I would have one half k x squared will equal to one half k a squared minus one half m v squared. Multiply both sides by two. Divide both sides by by k. So I get x squared will equal to. When you divide by k, you get a squared minus m over k v squared, and then take the square root of both sides. plus or minus. So x would be plus or minus this. A is 0 0.2 uh, minus, so here plus or minus. M over k, the mass is is what? Um, we don't have m over k actually. We don't have m over k. So let's work a little bit to find what m over k is. We have the period, then we have m. We know that omega is equal to 2 pi over the period. And uh, so omega squared will equal to 4 pi squared over the period squared. But omega squared is equal to what? Remember what omega squared was? It was k over m. So omega squared is equal to k over m. And uh, let's flip both sides so I get this. m over k will equal to the period squared divided by 4 pi squared. So this would be the following. This would be the period squared, period over 2 pi, the whole thing squared, times v squared. So maybe I should just put them all under the same square, times v squared, like so. So now we can just plug in. So 0.2 squared is uh, minus. The period is 0 0.8. v is 1, and then 2 pi, and you square this. And you get what you get. You get um, 0.8 over 2 pi. You square it. Okay, and then I have to take the square root of the whole thing. I get 0.154. So let me just double check here. Um, yeah, so 0.154 for x. So it's either when it is here or when it is here, when it's 0.154 away from equilibrium. It's symmetric when you're to the right by 0.154 or to the left by 0.154 uh, meters. And I think they want also the force constant of the spring. Yeah, they would like the force constant of the spring. Um, I mean, you can start here to solve for the force constant. You get k would equal to 4 pi squared times m divided by the period squared. You can get k that way. So you just plug in the numbers. So you get uh, 4 pi squared. So 4 times pi squared, 3.14159 to the power 2 and times the mass, 0 0.5, over the period squared, over 0 0.8, to the power of 2, and I get k to be about 30.8. Yeah, about 30.8. 30.8.
city of Point Hue. And used them for coding. So that was an interesting problem. I mean, we could have found when the speed is equal to magnitude of one from this equation, when the speed is either plus one or equal to minus one, and um, find the time, and then plug in, find the time when it's positive one, and then the time when it's equal to negative one. So when it's heading this way, it would have the negative one first, and then it would have the positive one. Uh, uh, It will have the it will have the negative one actually twice. It's heading this way. It will have negative one here and a negative one here. And then when it on the way back, it will have positive one and positive one. So solve for the sign, but then you have to deal with trig functions, and you have two times, and then plug those two times here, and those will give you two positions. Um, I think that's more difficult, and uh, this is better. It, it's easier and less likely to make far less likely to make a uh, mistake. All right, so on this next example here, it says, um, here's an example if you wanted something where phi, the phase, is not zero, here is one. At t equal to zero, a 500 gram block oscillating on a spring is observed moving to the right at x equal to 15 centimeters. It reaches a maximum displacement of 25 centimeters at t equal to 30 seconds. And then it says draw x versus t and then uh, what is the maximum force uh, on, the, on this block and at what time does this happen, does this first happen? Because the force is maximum whenever the displacement away from equilibrium is maximum, whenever x is equal to the amplitude. So um, when does it first occur? So let's draw x versus t first. Uh, before that, actually, let me draw the spring here. So here is the mass. Here is the natural position of the spring. The mass is somewhere here, and it's still moving to the right. This is a t equal to zero. T equal to zero. A t equal to zero. And um, this is the equilibrium. And then after a t equal to uh, at t equal to 0.3 seconds, it, uh, it's at x equal to 25. So this is, in here, it was 15 centimeters, or 0 0.15 meters. And then a little bit later, at 0.3 seconds later, this is t equal to 0 0.3 seconds. This is 30, 25 centimeters, 0.25. And the motion looks like this. Here is time, here is x. It started here at x equal to 15 centimeters, started there, and then it moved away, and then it, it would start coming down and then up and down like a sine function, a sinusoidal function, but not quite a sine, exactly sine of omega t or cosine of omega t because there is that phase. So we have um, x of t will equal to a times the cosine of omega times t plus phi. Okay. And I would like to know, uh, well, at t equal to zero, x is 15 centimeters. So let's see here. x at t equal to zero is 15 centimeters, so it's 0 0.15. And that has to equal to a times the cosine of omega, um, Cosine, uh, I'm sorry, uh, when t is zero, so you get omega times zero, you get zero, so this is just t. And at t equal to 0.3 seconds, x is 25, so the amplitude, therefore, is 25, right? It's a, a maximum displacement of 25. By definition, that is the amplitude. So at t equal to point, oh, I'm sorry, uh, which is point one five, point two. Oh no, this is correct. Okay, so I get v therefore t would be the cosine inverse of point one five over point two five, point one five over uh, zero point 
two pi right zero point two pi and um, if you plug this into the calculator let's see what I got here uh, by the way make sure you are working in radians I emphasize again so the angle whose sine is 0.15 over 0.25 or the angle who is I'm sorry the angle whose cosine let me write it this way 0.15 over 0.25 is 0.6 so cosine inverse of 0 0.6 the angle whose cosine is 0 0.6 can be one of two uh, so you get here b will be plus or minus uh, I, got, I didn't get my calculator sorry uh, you get 0.927 so uh, yeah you get 0 0.927 because the cosine is an even function cosine of 0.927 and the cosine of negative 0.927 both of them give you uh, 0.6 so which one should I take because at, at the end I have to do this I have to plug in that well, it's moving to the right. It's moving to the right. So what does it mean? Um, well, we have the the velocity, therefore, is positive. Uh, so if you look at the velocity, the velocity is a function of time. It's uh, negative a omega times the sine of omega times t plus p. Let's see what the velocity is at, at time t equal to zero. You get um, you get negative a omega. A is positive, omega is positive, and here I have the sine of uh, phi. I want the velocity to be bigger than zero. I need it to be larger than zero. Larger than zero. It's moving, so it has to be strictly larger. Well, if the velocity is larger than zero, it means the sine of phi is, is negative, because you get minus times minus will give you a plus to get a positive velocity. If the sine is negative, it means phi itself is negative, so we'll go with the minus. So phi will be minus minus 0.927. So I'm going to say that for x of t, the full function is x of t will equal to the amplitude, that's 0 0.25, times the cosine of omega t. Omega is 2 pi over the period. Uh, Actually, we don't know the period either, so let's just, okay, we'll keep it as omega t, omega t, minus 5, 0 0.927. That's our, uh, uh, our position, all right? Now, to figure out what, um, what omega is, uh, we, will, uh, uh, we will plug in now when the time, when the time is... 0 0.3 seconds, x is 25 centimeters, or 0 0.25, right? So we'll plug that in. All right, so let's plug it in. Plug in at t equal to 0 0.3 seconds. So when uh, t is 0 0.3 seconds, what do we have? Well, x will equal to the amplitude, which is 0.25. And then here I have equals to, that's the left side x is equal to the amplitude. Here I have the uh, 0.25 times the cosine of omega times the time, which is 0 0.3, so 0 0.3 times omega minus 0 0.927, that's for phi. Well, if you divide these, uh, you get one. So this has to equal to one. So if you divide these, you get one. So the cosine of this thing has to equal to one. And the cosine of something is equal to 1, it means what's inside it will be 0. So this has to be 0. So 0.3 omega will equal to, uh, so I conclude that this is equal to 1. Therefore, the inside of the cosine is equal to 0. So 0 0.3 omega minus 0 0.927 will equal to 0. So that means omega will be the 0.927 divided by 0.3. So let's do that. Uh, 0 0.927, um, 0 0.927 over 0 0.3, I got 3.09. I got 3.093 radians per second. Right. Omega.
omega should be a positive quantity, by the way, because it's uh, <laughs> square root of k over m. Should be a positive quantity. And it's related to the period. It's just 2 pi over the period. The per period is time. It's always positive. And so here they say, um, uh, we're not done yet. What is the, the maximum uh, force? Well, since we have omega, we can find k. So we know that omega squared is k over m. And so k would equal to uh, m omega squared, m times omega squared. And so that is, the mass is 0 0.5 kilograms, because it's 500 grams, 0 0.5 kilograms times omega squared, and that's 3.09 to the power 2. And again, we need to compute that. Let me put the calculator here. Okay, so I get 4.77 newtons per uh, meter. For the for the k, and what do I do with this? Well, I want to know when the force is maximum. It has a maximum uh, uh, value. The force when the block is all the way here, the force will point to the left, and uh, so that's a negative force. So I mean, it will have maximum magnitude, but not uh, maximum uh, like the the maximum, we have here a maximum magnitude, but the direction would be to the left. We would like it, the force here. So in other words, when is the position of this, when x is equal to negative a, when it's there. First, uh, let's calculate the magnitude of the force first. The magnitude of the force, that's maximum. Oh, the, f the magnitude of the force is just k times the a, the amplitude. Right, because force is kx or negative kx, so uh, so it's maximum whenever x is maximum. So let's multiply that by a 0.25 for the amplitude. So I get the force would be about 1.19. Would be 1.19 newtons. Now, at what time does it happen? Well, uh, was t was zero here. I'm sorry, t was zero here. After 0.3 seconds, it got here and we have to wait until it gets here. So that is when x is equal to negative a. So when is x equal to, when is x equal, when is x equal to minus a? So that happens when x is equal to minus a. So let me erase here, let me erase here. So x as a function of time is this, and I would like it to equal to minus a. So on the left side I have negative 0 0.25 and on the right side I have 0 0.25 cosine of uh, omega t minus 0.927 omega t minus 0.927 if you divide both sides by this then you have the cosine of this equal to negative 1 so that means uh, what's inside here the cosine of something equal to minus 1 it means that thing will be pi. That's the first time it happens when it's equal to pi. So th this thing here has to be equal to pi. So I get omega t minus 0 0.927 would equal to pi. So t would equal to pi plus 0.927 divided by omega, divided by omega. But omega is 3.09, 3.09. So we get what? Uh, pi 3.14 plus 0.927 over 3.09, I get 1.32 seconds. So that's when this first happens. It's equal to, when time is what equal to 1.3 seconds. That's when, uh, when the position is equal to negative a and the force will be to the right and equal to a magnitude of 1.19 or 1.2. All right, so how about if you orient the spring vertically, does it behave differently? The answer is the oscillations will actually still be the same. Um, so let's see. Uh, it will actually behave very exactly the same way, basically. So here is the spring. And 
and it has this natural neck with nothing hanged on it. I'm going to slowly hang a mass and then let it drop and then it will be at rest. So it will have some equilibrium position. So I'm going to hang a mass on it. So it will drop by an amount delta y, by an amount delta y. And this drop, since it will be in equilibrium here, there is the force of the spring, which is k times the extension, which is delta y, and there is the mg. And if it's sitting in equilibrium, then k delta y equal to mg, therefore delta y will equal to, uh, will equal to simply what? Um, equal in magnitude to uh, mg, mg over k, right? So if you do this, then the mass will just hang and it will never move. You come along and you pull it down by a, by a distance y and then you let it go, so the mass will go up and down. So let's see when we stretch it by a distance y. So here it is. We're going to stretch it by a distance y here. This is m. And by the way, here is, here is my y-axis. This is positive y, that way. So I'm going to stretch it by a distance y. So this here is negative y, negative y. So what's the force on, on this mass? Well, there is the force due to the spring upwards, the force of the spring upwards, and then the, 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 there is the force of mg. And if it's below, the force of the spring is up, and when you pass this equilibrium point, the force of the spring will be downward. Now, the force of the spring will be the total amount that you extended it, which is, you got the negative y here, because uh, you see, y will be a, uh, when you're below, let's say y is negative two, when you put a minus sign in front of it, that would be positive two, and I add to it delta y, that's the total stretch, because I want the total stretch. And that force will be upward, so we got, the net force would be the force of the spring, that's upward, minus the mg, will equal to the mass times acceleration, mass times the second derivative in the y direction. Earlier was dx second derivative dt, but here we're in the y direction, so we just use the symbol y. The force of the spring is k times the total stretch. We stretched it by an amount negative y plus delta y plus delta y. That's the total stretch. Again, y here, if you're below, it will be negative, and minus minus is plus. Minus mg will equal to m second derivative with respect to y dt squared. And here I have negative ky uh, plus k times delta y minus mg equals to m second derivative of y with respect to t. But k delta y minus mg, k delta y minus mg, that's equal to zero. k delta y is equal to mg, so this will simply, this will cancel. And we have the following, we have, um, um, uh, let me divide by the mass, so I have the second derivative of y with respect to t will equal to negative k over m and then y which is exactly the same equation we got in the x direction where we got the second derivative with respect to x with respect uh, second derivative of x with respect to time would be negative k over m x so it's exactly the same motion and uh, the next we will talk about the the pendulum the simple pendulum and then the physical pendulum